Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of the LSU Sports Insider. I am Wilson Alexander, lead LSU football writer here at The Advocate and Times Picune, joined once again by my colleague Reed Darcy. Reed, we have uh, now seen five, four practices. They practice five times. Yes. We've seen four of them. Uh, really in the swings of preseason camp here. Um, you were wise and had time to take a shower uh, mm -hmm. after getting off the practice fields. I uh, feel bad sitting next to you, quite no. frankly. No, it's, it's fine. I, I had to shower. <laughs> I was I was felt gross and sticky, and it's it's really hot out there. Humid. <laughs> it, it is. Uh, but LSU's making it through, getting acclimated to all that big part of here, the kind of first week of camp. Um, but I think before we get into anything football today, we'd be remiss not to mention Mondo Duplantis. Because yes. I think that's probably the biggest thing that's happened in LSU um, sports, certainly in the last, I don't know, however, I don't know how long you want to define this period, but it, it one of the biggest things that's happened uh, oh, yeah. of the year. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm still kind of juiced from watching it yesterday. Yeah. You know, if you haven't seen our front page, it's pretty cool today. I don't know if Amelia can zoom in on this, but um, we got a columnist, Scott Rabelais. He's in Paris. He's he's writing it. He saw it live, you know, so I'm kind of jealous of him. But just that was bit. just really, really exciting, really fun to watch. I had no idea I was such a fan of pole vaulting until <laughs> yesterday. I hadn't really watched Mondo compete um, all the way through um, until yesterday, but it was it was really cool to see him see him go. Do you know he had a, he had a brother who played baseball here? I did. You know that? Yes, I did. Wild. Antoine. Wild stuff. I don't think I've heard anybody say that ever. <laughs> <laughs> we yes. are presented uh, by Waste Pro. So, Tiger fans, if you're planning a tailgate or an event with football season right around the corner, I'm sure that you are. Keep your guests comfortable with portable toilets from Waste Pro. Call 225-744-6400 and mention Sports Insider for a special offer. Lots of tailgating coming up just here soon uh, as LSU football season is almost underway. We're going to start off today with one of the, the big news of the day. Mac Markway, sophomore tight end, has left the program. Uh, he confirmed that he's going to be entering the transfer portal when he's eventually able to do so and basically not play this season. Um, that certainly changes the complexion of LSU's tight end room as Markway last year was kind of the top backup to Mason Taylor. Came in, played in 12 games, started one game even uh, when Taylor had to miss a game because of an ankle injury and ended up doing a lot of run blocking. And LSU's a team that's gonna, that wants to use multiple tight ends at times this year, especially in the run game, and now it doesn't have Mac Markway. Reed, for starters here, what do you, do you kind of make of what this does to LSU's tight end room now that he has decided to leave the team? It, it could change some things with the run game. It could change some of the optionality that LSU has with that. Um, but when you look at tight end, I think it's probably one of the deepest position groups that LSU has. Um, you start off with Mason Taylor. Um, he's entrenched as a starter. He's going for um, a school record and catches and yards this season um, that, that'll probably get. And then behind him, without Markway, you have Camorian Pimpton, who's a sophomore, and Trey Des Green, who's a freshman. And, and look at, looking at them, watching them at camp, they both pop, you know, athletically. They're both super tall, long, athletic. Um, and so LSU has two really... Um, trustworthy options in, in them, guys you can lean on, guys who can be a part of the passing game. But do we know how much they can block? Do we know yeah. how, how they can contribute um, and run blocking like Mar Mar like Mac Markway did so well um, last year for LSU? That's one thing we're not so sure of. Um, exactly how ready are they to be full-time blockers? We don't know. Um, but but yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of a loss, um, but LSU does have some depth to, to withstand it. The run blocking, as you mentioned, is to me kind of the biggest thing in terms of how it affects this year's team um, because Markway had, I think, 155 snaps last year, only had three catches, did catch a touchdown. Um, I think it was against maybe Georgia State that he caught that touchdown. Um, but it was, you know, a complimentary role. And it seemed like he was in line for another complimentary role this season to Mason Taylor and to get on the field more. For him, it was about improving as a pass catcher so that he could be really an all-around tight end. Whereas with Pimpton and Green, it's about improving as run blockers. And now it really becomes important that trade as Green and particularly Kamori and Pimpton right. are able to block, in-line block a little bit. We haven't gotten to see it yet a whole lot out of them here in camp. We have, as you said, seen them catch the ball. And that mm -hmm. is always impressive. I mean, last year, Kamorian Pimpton, as a freshman, was one of the sort of camp most impressive guys in camp because he'd make these ridiculous catches. It didn't end up translating to the season. And they're hard um, to miss. Yeah. I mean, tr uh, Pimpton's 6'6". Six, six, yeah. Trade as Green's 6'7". <laughs> That's a lot of length between, you know, two tight ends there. Mm -hmm. But Brian Kelly said some interesting things about the two of them here recently, which was with in regards to Pimpton, he thinks he's developed more as a blocker, um, that he's just sort of his all-around games coming along. Uh, I think that 
watching him in the time that we've had out there so far, I think he's gotten better as a route runner, which was something they were working with him on in the spring. And then with Tredes, physically, he's there. But mm -hmm. Brian Kelly said is there also hasn't been like a tough transition for him to the college level. And keep in mind, this is a guy who's practicing for the first time because yep. he wasn't even here in the spring. Um, th that, you know, th they're really pleased with both of those guys. And Kelly said today there might be some situations this year where you see both of them and Mason Taylor all on the field at the same time. Yep. That'd be, you know, some kind of like 13 personnel. We're talking about 12. They, yeah. Who knows? Maybe they can do it. That's You'd have to have a lot of trust in your tight ends and have some really good ones in order to try to do that. And we could find out more in the coming days because the pads do come on tomorrow. So we, mm -hmm. we should see more live blocking and live tackling um, just to see how Pimpton and, and Traders Green sort of, you know, withstand that physicality that will, that will start to be start to seeing and kelly also said they're going to start working on third downs and red zones and red zone stuff in the, in the next coming days so those are you know red zone especially is kind of like an area where um pimpton and trade as green can kind of contribute use their size and length and athleticism to go and get jump balls and also with heavy packages on the goal line you know like you mentioned that 13 personnel 12 personnel that's you know an area that we'll probably see it a lot um, so yeah, we'll we'll get to see them. We'll we'll get to see exactly how they're adjusting and how LSU um, adjusts things without Markway. Um, and it's it's interesting to see because both of them have all the potential in the world, but we don't know too much about either of them yet. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Pimpton last year he only played in eight games. He had one catch for one yard, and yep. we know that there's a lot to like there as a receiver and as a tight end in the future, being more of an all-around player. Um, but he's got to start to put that together now. It becomes really, really important that he's able to play and play significant snaps this season. And it's particularly, you know, Mason Taylor last year had to miss a game with an ankle injury. Uh, the ankle ended up kind of hampering him throughout uh, the first, I guess, maybe middle portion, early portion of the season, first couple of months maybe. And, you know, he didn't, he only had to miss the one game, but God forbid something like that happened again. Um, you know, you would need them, both of them ready. Um, and so it certainly becomes important. I think the depth um, is a little bit, you know, isn't a concern necessarily yet. Like you said, they have depth to withstand Markway leaving, um, but it becomes um, that depth gets tested when somebody goes. And, and then obviously, again, as, as run blockers, we got to see what they're able to do. Um, we got some updates today on the injury front, uh, particularly with wide receiver Xavion Thomas. And today's injury report is brought to you by the Baton Rouge Clinic. Xavion Thomas is a Mississippi State transfer. Uh, he's a junior now, wide receiver, um, who hasn't been very active at practice the last couple of days. He has been in his in pads, but had a wrap on his right leg. It turns out Brian Kelly said today that he's got a little bit of a hamstring issue that's kind of lingering. They're not. Brian Kelly didn't wasn't concerned about Xavion Thomas's availability for the season or anything like that. Which you know, anytime you got it, like hamstring, soft tissues, the uh, can be kind of ambiguous as to when those things are are you know, ready to go again. Um, but they're trying to be careful with him, And, you know, certainly something to keep an eye on as we go through the rest of camp, whether or not he's able to get more involved on the offense again, because this is a guy who LSU certainly brought in to be a part of the offense um, and to be a factor in the return game, um, something that he did extremely effectively at Mississippi State. Averaged 12.6 yards per punt return over the past two seasons. Has had return, taken some back for touchdowns, taken a kickoff back for a touchdown. And that was something Brian Kelly said today when talked asked about special teams. LSU realizes it needs to get a lot better in kickoff uh, coverage and kickoff returns. Um, but on the offensive part, real quick, we heard going off script here for a second. Yeah, we heard Brian Kelly saying today about talked to, asked about the receivers, and we you know had put a lot kind of coming into the year who are going to be the number two and number three receivers. It's kind of crystallizing. Um, and what what did you what have you seen out of that position group so far in terms of its rotation? I think it's absolutely crystallizing. Um, Chris Hilton has been um, everywhere pretty much. We we've seen him catch a lot of passes today. He had at least um, three or four. Um, he's done a good job of getting open, especially over the middle on those short and intermediate routes. Are going to be such an important part of this offense um, now that Garrett Nussman Myers is at quarterback, and um, we don't LSU doesn't have Jaden Daniels because they lose his rushing ability. So the short and intermediate throws with Mason Taylor and Chris Hilton, um, you know, operating out of the slot sometimes, the, those are going to be there as part of the offense. It's going to be a big part of um, the offense's diet, I, I guess, for lack of a better word. Um, so it's it's Kyron Lacey, it's Chris Hilton, and then C.J. Daniels, the transfer from Liberty. You know, he's he's more of a vertical threat, you know, stretch the field kind of guy, and, and Kyron Lacey can come in and, and do a little bit of everything. So I think it's those three that Kelly really highlighted. It's those three that have really separated themselves so far. Um, and so it would take quite a lot from, I think, another another one of the receivers to sort of push into that mix. 
Um, but that's that's sort of the, the group there. There is a little depth behind them, um, but th that's the three that have solidified so far. Absolutely. I think you're going to look at th for those three to be starters and maybe three of your top four pass catchers, three of your top five, kind of see how things shake out over the season if someone else emerges or if there's an injury, all those sorts of things. Um, Xavier Thomas would be in that mix if he was more available. Um, but then you're seeing you know, further down in the rotation, I think at this point, LSU is just trying to figure out who else can they lean on, who else can be in the rotation, actually play significant snaps. So you're seeing Aaron Anderson, you're seeing Shelton Sampson, uh, Kyle Parker. Um, help me out if I'm forgetting somebody else who's like really been in that mix. I feel like that's kind of been maybe that next tier if mm -hmm. you were to do it mm -hmm. in that frame it in that way. Um, are all guys who are getting reps and, and getting touches. Shelton in particular, I think this has been a solid camp for him so far. And, at least getting a better look within the offense because it felt like in the spring he was kind of buried on the depth chart and and even when he got the ball thrown his way there was a i remember one day in particular where he had a drop and, and just wasn't doing enough with it and it seems like he's making a little bit more of a move to get himself involved in the offense and so that that receiver uh room certainly does seem to be crystallizing but the thing i like about him is that you mentioned like how they have some different strengths but I think they're all rather versatile. Mm -hmm. Kyron Lacey can do a lot of different things. His, you know, yards per catch last year was was really high. Um, you know, I think that he can isn't necessarily like a speedster like Chris Hilton is, um, but he can still stretch the field. We've seen Garrett Nussmeyer throw deep to him. We've seen Nuss throw deep to Chris Hilton more than a few times too, especially yep. in one on ones uh, the other day. Uh, just had Chris Hilton run go routes and burn people, um, and then. You know, CJ Daniels, I feel like is maybe I'll be interested to hear what Joe Sloan has to say about him, because um, it seems like he's maybe still kind of like getting up to speed and understanding the offense. But you can tell this is the guy who's played a ton of football, and um, I think he's going to be a pretty solid player for LSU this year. I'll form more, maybe more of an actual opinion on it a few weeks later into camp. Um, but before we get um, to the rest of the show, you know, we're going to talk about what well, everything we've seen from the defense. We're going to go over the rest of our camp standouts. I think that at least to this point. I think Chris Hilton might come up again in that yep. when we get there. Um, but before all that, Tiger fans, catch all the sports action at the Queen Casino's DraftKings Sportsbook Bar and 1717 Kitchen and Cocktails. With top-notch screens and live betting, it's the ultimate spot to watch your favorite teams and enjoy a cold beer or a signature cocktail. The Queen Casino is the only land-based casino in Baton Rouge and your go-to for game day or any day. Visit today and elevate your sports watching experience. The Queen of Baton Rouge proudly sponsors the Sports Insider Sports Betting segment with Thomas Cassell. Experience the thrill of game day at 1717 Kitchen and Cocktails, your premier destination for elevated sports entertainment. Thanks, guys. Well, it's August, and that means college football season is right around the corner. Uh, listen, the SEC is always the best conference in America, and then they went out and added Texas and Oklahoma, so the best conference got even tougher. I want to look today at odds to win the SEC over at DraftKings. The two favorites are Georgia and Texas, which makes sense. They're also two of the four favorites to win the national championship this year. Uh, listen, you can't go wrong betting the Georgia Bulldogs or the Texas Longhorns, but if you're like me and you like to go a little bit further down the odds board, I'll give you a couple teams to look for. That's Old Miss at plus 650 and LSU at plus 1,000. I think those are the two teams. They have manageable schedules. No one in the SEC has an easy schedule. But when you look at LSU and Ole Miss, the key game for both of them is against each other on October 12th. Uh, that game is in LSU, and both teams – have the same weakness coming into the coming into the season from last year. It's it's interesting with LSU, right? They they lose a Heisman Trophy quarterback. They lose two first round receivers, and what's everybody talking about? The defense. That's how bad that unit was last year. In comes Blake Baker from Missouri. Can he fix this defense fast enough for LSU to win the SEC? That's going to be the question. Then you have Ole Miss. Only lost two games last year. Those two losses were to Alabama and Georgia. They lost both by double digits. And Lane Kiffin said, we got to get bigger up front. He goes out, brings in three big-time transfers for the defensive line. So I think that game on October 12th between Ole Miss and LSU, the winner is going to have a chance to be in that mix for the SEC title. And listen, I like LSU. They lose a lot on offense, but you bring the Nuss bus has it rolling. You got one of the top offensive lines in the country. Will they be the number one offense in college football again? No, they're probably not. But they're not going to fall that far on that side of the ball. And then if Blake Baker can get that defense just to be good, okay, D 
decent. This team's going to be tough to beat. So those are the two teams I like, Ole Miss plus 650, LSU plus 1,000. But my best bet to win the SEC this year, I'm going to go off the beaten path a little bit. Give me the LSU Tigers. 10-1. to 1. I might be a year early with Brian Kelly's crew, but I think the defense improves. The offense is good enough. They make the SEC championship game. That gives us a shot to cash the bet. That's it for this week's betting tip. We'll see you next week. Thanks a lot. Football fans, with the Caesar Sportsbook app, you can be in the game all the time. Seeking instant action? Quick Picks offers you the most popular games and markets already built for you and ready to bet. Experience the thrill when you stack your bets to create a super parlay. Build bets for your favorite teams and players across multiple games. This season, don't just watch the game. Download Caesars Sportsbook and experience the game like never before. Thanks again to the Queen of Baton Rouge. And once again, our injury report is brought to you by the Baton Rouge Clinic, your trusted healthcare provider in the heart of Baton Rouge. Whether you're in need of primary care, specialist services, or urgent care, the Baton Rouge Clinic has you covered with a team of dedicated and experienced professionals. Visit batonrougeclinic.com to learn more or to schedule your appointment today. The Baton Rouge Clinic, caring for generations. Read. You know how far I've gone. The Baton Rouge Clinic, our sole focus is to provide exceptional health care for your entire family so that you can get back to doing what you love most. We are caring for generations. You give me love. All right, Reed, we've watched four practices, like we said. They've practiced five times. They're not in pads yet. So not yet. Take. You know, it's hard, you can't really draw any firm conclusions <laughs> about uh, anything, really, <laughs> unfortunately. But I do think that we can at least talk about what we've seen from this defense to this point. Because it does look different than last year in some places. I do think they've made some improvements. Like, I feel a little bit better about it than I did watching camp last season, at least. Is going to be, in, in like, much, much better? I don't know. But... First of all, just give me your overall thoughts about what you've seen defensively from LSU because it is such a point of concern coming into this year. So what what can you glean from these first practices when they're not in pads, um, you know, and they're just sort of trying to get their feet wet? Um, I think you can glean um, some valuable information from who's running with the ones, you know. So consistently throughout the first five practices, it's been Ashton Stamps and Sage Ryan at the two outside spots. Um, it's been Jarden Gilbert and Jordan Allen at the two safety spots, and then it's been Major Burns um, at, the, at the star. And so I think that um, grouping has been consistent throughout the first five practices, and that's obviously a good sign for LSU that, 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 they, that they've stuck with that group, um, at least to start. Um, it'll probably change in, in the coming days as Zai Alexander gets, gets uh, more comfortable recovering from, recovering from the ACL. Um, but... Like you said, and then like we talked about a little bit um, last time, I think like they've they've played a little more man coverage. We've seen them play one on one press coverage at the line against the receivers, and we have seen them um, be competitive, be active, be aggressive um, in, in those instances. And they have flashed some plays. They had a few pass breakups today. Ashton Stamps had one. The freshman PJ Woodland had one. Um, Sage Ryan had one. It was pretty good on on Kyron Lacy running a go route on the sideline. Um, so they have flashed a little bit. They've, they've shown um, you know, a willingness to be more competitive. But Brian Kelly said today that he wants them to be a little bit more consistent um, because if, if they sort of start to string together a few good practices in a row instead of a good, you know, drills in a row, if, if, you, try, if you know what I'm saying, um, then he'll be more confident um, in their abilities. Yeah, absolutely, because it, it perfectly kind of sums up what we've seen out of those corners, which is, like you said, they'll have some reps where you're like, oh, hey, look at that. Yeah. You know, especially I think Ashton Stamps, it's like a couple interceptions. He's had a couple pass breakups. He almost had another pick today um, in one, I think it was seven on seven. And yet then there'll be another play like two plays later where somebody gets burned, you get beat. And that's going to happen in practice, especially against what looks like a pretty talented group of receivers. 
but just stacking those good full days on top of each other will be important going into the season. I mean, week one, Zachariah Branch in USC, I still, th I still think you should be a little bit frightened by that as an LSU fan because of his speed. Um, but it's something where I do think this cornerback room is getting better and putting themselves in position to make plays um, more often than they were last year. I mean, we're, we're seeing it more often this this camp than we did last, last August and is certainly um, just more active around the football. Part of that is, like you said, just naturally playing man coverage. I think part of it is also uh, the fact that they've just gotten a little bit better in yeah. that room. And um, I think people will be interested to see kind of, you know, obviously, like you said, that sort of uh, the ones have been who they are pretty consistently. Um, but the, there's been some... Uh, rotation a little bit on the twos. Mm -hmm. We've always seen PJ Woodland with the twos, um, and he's made some really good plays here through the beginning of camp. I had a couple pass breakups and that kind of thing. Again, gotten beat here and there. Yep. Um, but there's also been um, Jaya Brown, J.K. Johnson have gotten some run with the twos. Michael Turner, a freshman, mm -hmm. has gotten some play with the backups. Haven't seen a lot of JV and Toviano or Zy Alexander with the twos. They've mostly been kind of with the threes. Um, Zy Alexander coming off that ACL, like you said, seems like he's yep. a little bit of a ways away from really being um, ready to go and like play in a game again as he's coming off the ACL, which is perfectly understandable. It might take a little bit of time. Um, and maybe it'll come here in fall camp, but maybe it's something that stretches into this season. We'll just have to watch that play out. Um, and then Toviano just hasn't really been in the mix at all, even though he's back with the team and reinstated after his arrest. Um, he isn't, uh, has not been a factor, uh, to this point in camp. Um, and that's just the secondary, you know, we haven't gotten like a ton out of the front seven. I feel like this is going to be a solid linebacker core. Mm -hmm. Um, I like what I've seen with Harold Perkins, Greg Penn, Whit Weeks, uh, even Wes Weeks too, uh, could be a, a role player, kind of rotational guy in there. I'm fascinated to see how Blake Baker uses his linebackers. Cause it feels like you should have Whit Weeks, Greg Penn and Harold Perkins on the field as much as possible. Yes. Um, they haven't made like a ton of plays necessarily. I don't know that there's been a lot of opportunity for them to make lots of plays um, to this point in camp, but I still like feel pretty comfortable with that group. Greg Penn was in on a sack today. You're seeing Harold Perkins sometimes blitz off the edge, um, which is going to think a, a lovely sound for LSU's fans ears. And then tell us about the front four a little bit, because you've watched some one-on-ones yes. over the past couple of days with that defensive line. And we've seen, again, kind of who's been repping with the first team. So it's important to point out the front four, um, Braden Swinson and Jalen Lee haven't been there. They're, for, they're taking some summer classes. They're finishing Spanish up. Specifically. They're, they're taking <laughs> Spanish, um, which um, I'm glad that I, <laughs> that I never had to take Spanish. Um, but yeah, they're... So Brian Kelly said they, they should be back by Monday. So um, without them, it's been Deshaun Womack and Savion Jones on the outside. Inside, it's been Jacoby and Guillory and Gio Paez, the Wisconsin transfer. And it's been those four consistently. It might change once the, the, the other two get back, uh, but that's, that's what it's been. Um, and yesterday, Monday, um, I spent a good time watching the one-on-ones between the D lineman and the O lineman. Um, the offensive line, line really had had a great day you know they really won most of the reps there um they, they i think by my count it was like eight of 13 or eight of 14 um just but just based on my judgment um so so they the offensive line had a great day that's to be expected the offensive line is one of the top units in the country um and a lot of the players we talked to yesterday like greg penn and jacoby and guillory said that um you know, they think of the LSU offensive line like that, too. They think of it like the best unit in the country, and they think of their reps against um, the LSU line as a way for them to get better and to prove themselves um, against the top competition in the, in the country because they said, like, hey, we're we're going against the LSU line every day. Um, we, we face a team on Saturday. They might be worse than the team we go against in practice every day. So um, so I think it'll, it'll be interesting to see, you know, throughout the rest of camp how those those two position groups sort of go back and forth. Does the D-line get better um, in, in those in those drills? Does the O-line um, keep dominating? We'll, we'll have to see. But um, it, it's it, it's encouraging from a standpoint of you know what the offensive line is. Um, now you want to use that as a measuring stick against the defensive line, if, if that's if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. And just like you said, like we'll have to kind of see throughout camp how those two positions kind of go back and forth. Today, I thought was and this is part of the reason that we're sort of talking about the defense today. I thought today was a really solid day for the defense as a whole. Like the LSU did a situational team period that was all sort of second down. Um, and 
uh, near the end of practice, and the offense just never got in a rhythm. Like it, there was one play where John Emery ripped off a, a run like untouched, mm-hmm. but there was also like two pass breakups by Sage Ryan and by PJ Woodland. And uh, like I said, right at the end of what we could see as we were getting ushered off the field, they weren't quite done yet. You know, Greg Penn was in on a sack. Um, there was a couple other run plays I feel like got at least bottled up. You know, they didn't weren't able to break off some big runs like we had kind of seen in practice on Monday. And in one-on-ones, Savion Jones had like a really good day in one-on-ones. He was yes. beating Emory Jones a couple of times. Emory seemed to be getting kind of frustrated, and, and it was that was encouraging to see out of Savion. Um, Will Campbell, you know, again uh, yesterday said that he thinks Savion Jones is going to have a really good year. Um, going up against him, you know, they get matched up a lot. And, it, you know, I think Jacoby and Guillory had a really nice one-on-one rep today. I believe it was against DJ Chester. And that, you know, was good to see. It's not like just the offense is dominating every mm-hmm. single day. The defense, I thought, had a really solid day today. And, like, again, just never the offense never seemed fully comfortable when they got into that team period. There was other parts of practice where, like, Garrett Nussmeyer was airing it out and really seemed in control. Um, but when they went to that second down situational stuff, uh, the defense was a, was pretty effective. Um, again, it's hard. They're kind of tagging off. They will be – they're wearing shoulder pads and, and helmets. They're not in, um, you know, full tackling yet and all that. But I think we're going to start to get into some more of that tomorrow, I think Brian Kelly said. Yeah. They'd be into some more like um, periods where you're looking at like third down, um, where they're actually kind of moving the sticks and be able to even get some more insight into whether or not this defense is actually going to be better. We'll keep an eye on it all the way throughout camp uh, as much as we can possibly try to learn uh, about it, because that's obviously one of the major things for this team. And I think that's putting it lightly. Um Kind of like how uh, we get back to Mondo for a second uh, <laughs> said the other day. He's like, I'm just kind of good at this one new yeah. sport. It's like, uh, yeah, that's an understatement. I'm pretty so. good. Really good. <laughs> Decent. So, you know, we're through these five. We're through basically like a week or so of camp. Um, I guess tomorrow will really be like a full on week. Um, but I feel like this is still a good time to maybe look back at some players who we've been impressed by. Even just if it's like a little bit like, hey, I kind of like what I've seen. And so today's camp standout segment is proudly sponsored by Waste Pro. Ensure your tailgate or event is a hit with clean and convenient portable toilets from Waste Pro. Rent yours today. Reed, if you were to pick three players who you've liked out of camp so far, who would they be? All right, so first one I thought of is Ashton Stamps. Ah, you beat me to it. Um, I figured you'd have the same. I figured we'd have a lot of overlap here. Um, Ashton Stamps, he had a interception on the first day that was really impressive. Um, he was in zone coverage. He sort of rotated over, jumped and grabbed an interception to Garrett Nussmeyer. Um, landed in bounds right on the sideline. So that, that was really impressive. Um, and then I believe yesterday he followed it up. He, he picked off a um, pass from Nussmeyer, just uh, cut off a crossing route. Um, solid play there. I think I think he's, you know, with those sort of splash plays, he's really um, shown a little bit of growth. Um, and we saw him have a great preseason camp last year. Hindsight, that probably should have um, raised some red flags for the rest of the defense right. last year, given he was a just a freshman, you know, coming in three-star um, but, yeah, he, he's been great. Um, he's shown flashes as well. Um, I think the other player I wanted to highlight, Mason Taylor. Um, just all, all the times that he's gotten open and that Garrett Nussmeyer has thrown to him, um, it's definitely a lot more than we saw in games last year, um, and, and that's to be expected. We expect him to um, be more involved in the offense now that Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas aren't involved and how um, Garrett Nussmeyer will probably – um, target more of the short and intermediate areas than Jaden Daniels did. Um, so no surprise there, Mason Taylor. And the other one, I guess I'll say we talked a little bit about Chris Hilton earlier. Um, I, I guess I'll say Chris Hilton as well. We might have had the same three. I don't know. But but Chris, Chris Hilton, his speed stands out. Um, his route running stands out. Um, he gets open. Nussmeyer finds him. They, they, the two of them have um, a good connection, you can tell. Um, so th- those are my three. What about you? I think those are good three. We don't have the exact same three, which I'm happy about. Um, the th- folks who have caught my eye so far is Stamps. I think I've spent a lot of time watching the secondary, mm-hmm. and he's also just sort of made and you you you, read, you know sort of described most of them, but he's just kind of I think made the most like individual plays that make you sort of like you know look up again kind of thing um which is a weird way of describing that but um he's he's stood out in that regard in particular and i don't think it's like a done wouldn't be like necessarily a done deal yet because we're so early in camp but like pretty close to being able i think pencil him in as a starter Mm -hmm. corner because there just has been no sign that he would wouldn't be at this point sage ryan still might back move back to safety because brian kelly said they're cross-training him at corner and safety right now he's playing corner 
what if he moves back to safety? You know, that opens up a spot for Zy Alexander maybe at the corner spot. Or so, P.J. Woodland, or PJ who's Woodland. had a good camp at, right. uh, um, uh, to this point. But, again, it's kind of inconsistent. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll have to see how that cornerback plays out. I feel like, he, again, yeah, stamps at one spot and the other is the one that we're really looking at, I think, throughout the rest of camp. Um, and we'll update you if stamps, you know, doesn't end up being in that spot. But it feels like it's pretty uh, – it's certainly trending in that direction. My other two, Will Campbell. Hmm. Um, I mean, he's been really good in all of the one-on-one -on -one reps that we've seen. I mean, it's kind of like an obvious given one, but like there's a reason this guy might be the first tackle taken in the draft next year, um, why he's probably one of the best offensive linemen who's ever come through LSU when it's going to be all said and done. Um, that The reason he's been a starter since day one as a freshman. Um, he is so consistent. He's got great technique. And now LSU, you know, as we've talked about with the run game, is getting him out in space. Watching him, you know, run out on a toss play and just take out corners to seal the <laughs> seal a lane is really fun to watch. Um, you know, he's athletic and uh, he moves really well. And it's not something that he's had to do a whole lot the last few years, nope. but I think that he is going to do a great job of it this season. So Will Campbell would be my second one, and then my third will be Kyron Lacy. Again, it's like kind of a given, but like sometimes we start looking for like, oh, who are the guys who we don't know much about? Are they going to be more contributors? And sometimes like last year in Campbell's like, okay, Malik Neighbors is the number one and he's going to be the one who we're talking about all season. I think Kyron, we're going to be talking about him a lot all season. Um, probably the guy who will end up as LSU's leading receiver if I had to bet on it. I'm not necessarily a betting man, but I would feel like uh, that's a safe one way to go because mm -hmm. um, he hasn't taken over a practice like he did at times in the spring. There were some moments in the spring where it's just like Garrett would just throw to Kyron and uh, he was just making plays all over the place. But he's still been really consistent. Um, his route running's crisp. Haven't seen any drops, which was obviously the problem with him early in his career. Um, and very much the opposite of that. Really sure hands uh, to this point. And I think there was one play, you know, in one-on-ones just on Monday against P.J. Woodland. Woodland has pretty good coverage, but Garrett Nussmeyer throws a back shoulder fade to Kyron. He turns around, grabs it, gets a foot down to stay in bounds. I mean, just smooth. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I've seen some really good things out of him that feel like, okay, this is going to be a guy when else he needs to play, like he's one of your first options, uh, I think, is uh, this season. So those would be my three to this point. Um, and, you know, we're going to have a, a lot more over at theadvocate.com and NOLA.com. Uh, LSU practices again on Wednesday. We've got to talk to players on Friday. They practice another again on Saturday. We're also this week speaking with Joe Sloan and Blake Baker. Going to hear from the two new play callers that LSU has this year. And a whole lot more practice next week as well. So make sure you're keeping it locked over at theadvocate.com and NOLA.com. Uh, you can find this show, if you're not watching it already right now on YouTube, if you're listening to it over on Spotify or Apple or vice versa, you know, you can find this over at LSU Tigers on NOLA.com on the, our YouTube page. You can find lots of shorts there from practice too. We've got practice clips, interview clips that are going up there now. Um, and then if you're watching this on YouTube, you can also find it on Apple, Spotify, or wherever other finer podcasts are found. Um, so make sure you go and like, and subscribe, keep up with the show. We're going to have you covered, uh, this way and in print. You know, comprehensive coverage from us over at The Advocate, shameless plug, uh, all season long. So thanks again for watching, everybody. For Reed Darcy and Amelia Cotton behind the glass, I am Wilson Alexander. This has been the LSU Sports Insider, and we'll see you next time.